Hi, guys. Hello. Georgia. Happy Sunday. Come here. Come say hi. Oh, my goodness. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. Oh, hi. Georgia's here with her messy hair. Hi. Georgia. Oh, who's that? Georgia. Hi. Hi. Is that confusing? Hi. No. That's Nana. Hi. E and Lisa and Natika. Everybody's there. No. We're going to wait a few more minutes. Ooh. So I'm up on a mountain. If can you guys hear me? Dude, does my audio work? Yeah, it's just a little weird, Aaron, but we can hear you. Is that Lisa? No, it's Lisa. That was Lisa. Oh yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> All right. Well. I love your hair. Good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's super cute. Yum. 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 Oh no! Bye bye, Black. Georgia. Oh no. Say hi, Nana. Hi, Nana. Hi, Georgia. See, the puppies are being crazy. And so I am banished from the room for a few minutes. Sweet. Yay! Yay! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, cuddle bear. All right, guys. Well, well, I'm sure we'll get a couple stragglers, but we might have a small group tonight. So maybe a bunch of people will catch the replay. Um, I have a few quick um, announcements, just some things to look forward to in 2020. A couple little changes. Um, and we're gonna remind everybody a whole bunch of times as as we get Nana, closer to Nana. I know Nana as we get closer to 2020 but a couple of things to look forward to is one the Marco Polo groups Nana. are going to be changing and so um we're going to be shuffling them a little bit and making them smaller and so this is nothing to fear this is a positive this is something that we've all kind of thought about quite a bit and will enhance our community and supporting each other but um that's one thing to look forward to in 2020 is a shuffled marco polo um structure and smaller group so that's going to be super cool um it doesn't mean that you can't stay connected with the people that you built bonds with um the nice thing about marco polo is we've got like little branch off groups like we've got a running group and a meal prep group and people who are like focused on strength stuff we've got all sorts of stuff so you can totally stay plugged in with all the people that you've built relationships with but in terms of like our the size of our groups um that was one of the things that came through in the survey and we kind of already knew that we wanted to make them a little bit smaller um so they'll be more accessible Second thing to look forward to in 2020 as a part of this announcement is, <laughs> oh, Georgia. Fussing. You're fussing. Um, that the Sunday email will actually be going away. So believe it or not, um, we want to make things as simple as possible. And so we thought about what was one way that we could simplify. And that is one less thing that you have to look for and do. Um, so what that really means is that the Sunday call is going to be the sort of hub for information. It already is. So instead of it being redundant and having an email with that too, the Sunday call is going to be where you come at the beginning of the week. I'll tell you what the prompt is. Like, hey, you know, this week we're focused on this, just kind of like we already do. And then I'll tell you, you know, reach out to your coach tomorrow and let them know how you're doing and what you need. And this is what we're looking for this week to focus on. And so really it's just one less thing on your plate, but the Sunday call will become, you know, extra more important kind of thing. So those are the only two changes I wanted to share tonight, just to look forward to for next year. We're always trying to like 
improve and make things better. And um, virtual coaching, I think we've all like considered it such like a wonderful positive, but it's a challenge too. To how do we how do we communicate? How do we make progress? How do we support each other? But then not have too many things. We want to make it as effective and clear as possible. So those are the two big changes to share tonight is um, change number one is our Marco Polo groups are going to be getting smaller, which is going to be awesome. And change number two is that we are going to not have the Sunday email anymore next year. It'll be heavily focused on the Sunday call. And so if you can't make it, you'll just catch a replay. So couple more things that'll be like revealed in the next coming weeks, all good positives, um, but I wanted to share those first. Um, so Sunday topic for tonight is one of our basics. Um, we are circling back. Last week we talked portion sizes. Well, Josh just got Georgia, that's why she's mad. I'm gonna go hide for a second. That way I can talk to you guys. She's mad. Um, last week we talked portion sizes this week, we are circling back to one of the basics we start with on day one of our foundation, which is water. So I just want to go around and I'm curious tonight, show of hands, if you are on track to hit your water target today, Natika says, yes. Kristen, no. Lisa, no. Leah, yes. Nikki, yes. I'm a no. Aaron's a yes. I will. Molly's a yes. So you guys are all pretty good. I'm I'm curious on the replay if you guys are listening to us. Mom's a no. Kathy's a no. Okay, so we're like about split. We're about split 50-50. Um, as funny as it is, this simple one is potentially the easiest and hardest thing we can do during the holiday season to keep our bodies feeling good. So as we, you know, keep our movement going, we have a little bit more treats than normal. We enjoy those occasions. Um, maybe our schedule's a little bit different. Getting dehydrated physiologically is not helpful. A couple of things happen when we don't drink our water. So one, our digestive system slows down. Um, so you might feel more bloated. Two, you retain water. So that seems kind of you, you know, counterintuitive. You would think if you're dehydrated, you would be like losing water, but that's just not how our cells work. When we don't have adequate water, then they retain water. Um, so then you'll feel maybe a little bit more fluffy than normal. Um, three, our body has to work harder to clear toxins. So toxins being, unless you're like deliberately eating some kind of toxin, I don't know about the kind of toxins that I'm talking about are sugar and alcohol um, and just other, you know, food. We have to, our body has to process food. Um, and then the last piece is if you are exercising and doing anything to challenge your body physically, which all of us are doing something, you've got to be hydrated for your muscles to repair and for your body to rebuild muscle, which is like key to your metabolism and burning calories. So for all of those reasons, we want to be hydrated. Um, but two, I mean, I didn't even talk about skin. I didn't talk about like all of the other things that really make a difference when you're hydrated. Oh my God, Aaron, you're so funny. Are you hiding your elf right now as we do a Sunday call? I have two and I do one ahead of time so that by the time my kids go to bed, I can just change it real fast. <laughs> I'm in the closet. Super on it. I love it. I, I just was, I just had to point that out that I saw your elf on the Zoom call. Um, so I, I can honestly say for me, water is, is one of the biggest challenges. I, I'll be honest. It, it's, it was one of the first fit me basics because it's a, it's always been a challenge for me. If I get behind, I don't drink water. If I have the option to drink five cups of coffee instead of water, I'll do that. Um, and then even when I start thinking, oh, I better drink water, I go to sparkling water, which isn't bad. That still counts, but it's still not as good as drinking your water, like and getting all of it in, you know, not making up for it, like with like 
to LaCroix. That doesn't count. And that's not enough. And so I wanted to share this sort of as an intention, something easy that we can focus on this week is hitting our water and circling back to the basics of what do we need to hit our water? One, you need to know how much water you need to hit. Does anybody remember the equation? Aaron, what is it? Half of uh, your body weight plus 10 ounces. Yes. Yeah. Half your body weight um, plus 10 or 15. I think some people say 15, um, but that's pretty much correct. And then if you want to be really on it, it's plus 20 for every hour of physical exercise. So if you're doing like really hard workouts, then you get to add even more water on top of that. So your body weight divided by two, that's your number of ounces plus 10 or 15. That's your baseline. That's how much water you drink every day. And if that is super duper duper far away from what you're doing right now, and you start drinking that amount, you are going to feel like you are a balloon. Um, and most of us probably remember how that felt like in the very beginning of fit me, if you weren't drinking your water and all of a sudden you started, you kind of feel like you're inflating and then you pee all day, every day, but then your body catches up a couple of days later, you're caught up and you'll return to normal and you'll just be hydrated. Um, and so that as simple as it is, is our priority for this week. Something just so basic. Let's return to hitting our water. Um, and if you don't have a cup for your water, go dig one of those jokers out. I, you know, my simple rules for that, and you can, you can modify these as long as it's a cup that you like. Ideally, if you are somewhere, somebody that goes places, which is not everybody anymore, it used to be a lot more people, but if you are somebody that goes places, it needs to fit in your cup holder because otherwise you won't take it um, with you when you go places. If you don't go places, it can be whatever size you want. And I personally think that a cup with a straw is better. Um, here's the reason why I think that, because there are multi-billion dollar companies who think about human behavior and how we drink things. And if you go to a movie theater or a baseball game or somewhere else where they sell sodas, there is no universe that they would sell you a soda in a metal jar or canister that you have to unscrew to drink. They don't do it because we don't drink very fast that way. Um, and it's not easy to drink your water that way. So they sell you soda in a cool cup with a straw and you drink it in no problem. Um, and so I kind of took that cue for if you do struggle with water, then using a cup with a straw can be really helpful. If you don't struggle with water and you already get it in, then you can have a metal cup that screws on the top. You get to pick whatever cup you want if you drink all of your water. But if not, I strongly recommend a straw. It makes a big, big difference. So let's open it up. I, 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 I know this is like not as like, you know, big brain of a topic, but I want to talk about water. I want to talk about what you feel like when you know you're not hydrated. Um, I want to hear about if you um, if you plan to have any drinks this week or any sugar, if you know that you can get water in on those kind of days. So talk to me about water, especially if you struggle with it. I want to know what works for you. What are your strategies for getting it in? Lisa. I'll go. Yeah. Okay. So this is one I struggle with really bad and Molly's been helping with it. So I'm going to share one, one of the tips that she gave me that seems to help me a lot is before I'm allowed to have anything in the morning is having a glass of water before my coffee, before anything. And that has been where I'm getting more out of my water is forcing myself to, before I'm allowed to have any other liquid like tea or coffee, is getting that cup of water, like eight ounces, 10 ounces of water in before I'm allowed to have the stuff I want, like coffee. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I think I never hit my, never hit my target. You have not ever yet? Not, oh. not the one that we set when we do the equation. I have not hit it. 
Well, this is your week. Oh, terrible. This is this is your week. We're all going to cheer because Lisa is going to hit her water at least one day this week. So when you hit it, you need to post okay. it. Okay. I know you can right. do it, but I think you're right. Like if it's especially if it's something you struggle with, getting a jump start on it first thing, and even having it be the very first thing you do is really smart because again it sets a tone and intention for the day like oh this is a priority because it's important yep. for my body to feel good um that's awesome lisa that's i got good. the water bottle good are you using it i got I, I followed all your parameters i fill it up i take it with me i have it everywhere now maybe i just need to get that timer like i've talked about and actually have it yell at me to do it do you know how many of those water bottles you have to drink to hit your target? Um, almost four. Okay. So that's, that's what I would use is like, if you know, you have to get four, then like choose times throughout the day that you want to be done. Number one, done. Number two, done. Number three, you know, um, a lot of people use a strategy where they really just have a timer go off every hour and they drink a little bit rather than, you know, to try to chug it or something like yeah, that. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, I also think- All right, we, well, thanks. I'm gonna... Well, I think another way, Lisa, that you talked about um, just with starting your day with it is starting each meal with a glass of water. So that's like another way to sneak it in without having to like really change anything. Cause usually you're, you're gonna eat a meal. It's not that weird to drink a glass of water before you do it. Um, so I, that's another good strategy. Uh, Kristen just wrote in the chat box. She wrote, Lisa, what are some of the barriers to getting your water? What gets in your way? Well, some of the barriers for water for me is obviously one, just being super busy. So I tend to forget to drink water because I'm just hyper-focused on work. The other, I'm going to be very candid. I don't know if anybody has the same problem as me is I tend to dehydrate myself before I go to the gym because I have bladder issues. So it's embarrassing and you don't want to run to the bathroom constantly. Jump roping sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, running can suck sometimes. So I just, I dehydrate myself. And so that's a huge barrier for me and I need to just get over it. Mm hmm I know that you're not the only one who has that challenge. So I'm glad that you shared it just because I know that's a real thing for a lot of people. Maybe if you, if you could front load it again, like your body, you'll get used to it. When you're first starting to drink more water, it's going to feel like you have to pee extra. But if you start drinking more of your water first thing and you don't work out till later in the day, it shouldn't be as, as noticeable, you know, that you've been drinking water. Um, I, I got one of these water bottles that we've talked about before that say the times uh huh. and I take it cause I don't have time. Well, when we were working right still, I don't have time to fill it up. So it's really big and people at work comment on it all the time, <laughs> but you know, if it's a certain time, you know, I have an alarm go off and I say, okay, did I drink, you know, to that time? And then, so here it is eight o'clock and it's, I've got like barely any left. You did it. I have the same water bottle that's sitting on my counter, not drank. They used it to fill the Christmas tree today. That's what happened with my water. <laughs> they were like, oh, there's a gallon of water here. I will fill the Christmas tree with this. Um, but that's I do like a time, you know, a time calendar on your water. I think that's excellent. You hydrated the Christmas tree before yourself. I did. Yeah. Actually, my kids did, but that was my fault. Um, Natika said her smartwatch reminds her to move regularly throughout the day. And then she uses that reminder for her water. That's great. And that's like a, a habit stack, actually. Like if you, you know, stick those two things together, that's a really good way for your brain to kind of just like recharge the battery, right? Like go for a little walk, drink some water back to business. Um, that's really awesome. That's smart. Um, you know, what's funny about water. It's just like everything else. Um, when I think about Aaron, you were saying how it takes so long to fill up your water bottle. I think of that too, because I have the big one and I hate standing there at my fridge and filling it up, even though it takes like three minutes, it doesn't take a long time, but it feels like a long time to stand there for three minutes and fill up my water bottle. And so then sometimes I don't do it. And then I 
think to myself, well, it takes too long to fill it up. Like it's, it's annoying, but that just shows me that I haven't made drinking water a priority because once something's a priority, like, again, if it's not a priority, if it's a little obstacle or a big obstacle, it doesn't matter. It's going to get in your way. If it's not a priority, like standing at the fridge for three minutes feels like as big of an obstacle as like being in the desert with no water. Like I, I can't do it. I can't drink my water. I'm in the desert or I can't stand there and fill up my water bottle in my fridge because it takes too long. Like, but it, the truth of it is, it's just, I haven't chosen to make it a priority. And again, there's about if you want to like do a quick Google for how to lose weight, like the top five most important things you can do for a healthy body and lose weight on every single list from anybody that's reputable, drinking your waters on that list. There's no person who's like having physical transformation that lasts a long time that doesn't drink water on the regular. They just go together. I just wanted to share, I have the gigantic water bottle too, and I hate filling it up. Sometimes I get my kids to do it. Um, So what I started doing is before I go to bed at night, filling it up, putting it in the fridge. And it's been a game changer because I know it's ready to go in the morning when I'm doing my workout and stuff. And that's been really helping me. That's a good idea. I've actually been on a water streak for a few weeks now. So Maybe that's the tiny tweak that I need to change. Mm -hmm. Fill it up the night before. I mean, I just need to fill it up in my shower. Just like go ahead and take it in the bath and fill it up with the bath <laughs> so it's faster or the hose or something. Because for fill some it. reason, it's easier to fill it up at night than it is in the morning. I don't know why, but for me, that works. So Yeah. Yep. Temperature can matter too if people struggle with water. Sometimes water that's too cold is actually harder to drink. Um, and so, I mean, again, if you're somebody who does great, you drink whatever temperature you want. But if you're somebody that struggles, then shifting to more of like a, a cool or slightly cooler than room temperature might be easier to drink than like ice cold. That's funny you say that because I actually will fill my water bottle up at night so that it's not cold, so that it's like room temperature, and then I drink it way easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. It's for sure. Christy, I actually like to drink my water hot. Oh, um, not so hot that it burns, but like hot tea almost, but just plain water. Um, as long as it's not too hot, I can drink it a lot quicker. Huh. Um, I now during the, my I go to well, I haven't been to him in a while, but my acupuncturist, he's from China and he tells me when it's cold, you drink hot. When it's hot, you drink cold. Yep. That sounds like Eastern medicine kind of ideas. They have a lot of ideas about temperature and stuff. That's cool. I find it works for me. It's just during the winter, it is a little bit tricky to, so I use a metal water bottle Mm -hmm. that keeps, that's supposed to keep things hot longer. Yeah. The metal ones definitely do keep it hotter. Um, And really, you know, I'm just kind of teasing about the water bottle. I, any water bottle you actually like and you'll use is the right one. Just like workouts. Any one that you'll actually do and you like, that's the right workout for you. Um, but I just do joke because I've been tempted many times at Target and other places that sell those cute metal water bottles and I have bought them and never used them. Or I use them for like one day. And then I'm like, don't use them. You know, I wanted to bring up, since it is like Christmas treat season, I have uh, been eating a lot of Christmas cookies recently. We just did a Christmas cookie exchange in my family today, but um, I hit my water yesterday. I ate a few cookies yesterday while making them, and I woke up today feeling kind of hungover and uh, just like, nope hungover actually but I did I didn't drink anything last night like there was no alcohol involved is my point but I drank a bunch of water first thing this morning like I normally do I had my fit me plate this morning and then I kept hydrating in fact I drank an extra bottle of water today and I feel much better 
but I think I actually had to flush out <laughs> the sugar. Um, so I think, especially when we're kind of indulging in things we don't normally indulge in, it makes hydration even more key at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And alcohol dehydrates you. And so it's almost like your water needs even go up. If you do have sugar or alcohol, your water needs go up because your body has to process it. Um, and so I know this is just a, a super basic, but I feel like we should all set it to be our intention for the week. You know, sometimes having one intention can go really long way. And so this week, the intention inside fit me other than just to enjoy, you know, our holiday occasions and get ready for, you know, big holiday week. A lot of people are still getting stuff done with work and presents and all the things that you've got to get done. Drinking your water can be a, a big win, a little win that actually turns into a big win for your body. Um, and just know too that, again, like when you think about all of the things that can be really hard, sometimes conquering something that's really attainable, but still challenging can kind of be a catalyst for some of the other things that are really hard, right? Like this is one of those ones where it's kind of like annoyingly hard, but there's no reason that any of us can't do it. So it's just sometimes doing these kind of things, prove to yourself that you can, you know, I got this one under wraps, like let's move on to the next thing that's actually hard. And I know a lot of us have big goals that we're excited about to start tackling, like, especially in January and the new year, that's really fun around the corner. And so this is like a really good way to set that foundation. Um, does anybody have anything else before we wrap up? Sweet. All right. I am going to take a screen. I, I just want to say, uh, Kristen, you look really pretty tonight. I know she really does. I noticed that too like the pearls <laughs> yeah your whole situation is beautiful and I feel like you ate a cookie on cue like I don't know if I was just seeing something or when Molly was talking about cookies you actually ate one on cue I think you're muted Kristen and they were made by her oh well perfect then you il you illustrated her story yeah uh, yes all right, guys, let's take a quick picture. Um, everybody get your face ready. All right. One, two, three. Got it. All right. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you all later and reach out if you need anything. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.